Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's see how a telescope is actually built. We're talking about a refracting telescope because there's a lot of different kinds of telescope, but the telescope that takes two converging lenses, a very big one up front and a small one in the back, they're both converging lenses, one called the objective lens, sometimes simply called the objective for short, and the small one in the back here, the eyepiece to which the observer will look. That's so we take those two lenses and place them exactly the right distance apart depending upon the focal length of these two lenses and then you have yourself a telescope. So the condition is that the first lens, the objective lens, has a very long focal length. And so you can see that the focal point almost reaches the second lens, but not quite. The focal length of the second lens is much smaller. And in order to make a telescope, you have to make sure that those two focal lengths overlap. If they don't overlap, it doesn't act as a telescope. So you want these two to overlap and then you have a telescope. There is usually a small amount of adjustment. You can move the, the small lens back and forth to make sure that it's focused correctly to make sure that those two focal points are indeed overlap. So the rays come in from a very far away object like a, a galaxy or a star. They come together. Uh, well, they don't come together, they come in parallel to the optical axis, go to the first objective lens, and of course, since it's a converging lens, the rays will come together. The outside lines are, of course, the edge of the telescope, the inside lines are the rays of the light, so the light comes in, the light rays begin to converge, and they finally converge to a point just past the focal point of the first lens. I call that F1, it's a little bit farther away than F2, it's a little closer this way. And remember, when the objects are really far away, which they are in the case of astronomy, the image is formed just past the focal point of that first lens. So there's your first image, which now becomes the object of the second lens. So that image there now acts like an object to the second lens. Since that object is within the focal length or, the, or closer to the lens on the focal point of that second lens, you will end up with a virtual image off of that object. So this is basically an object or the image of the first lens that acts as the object of the second lens and that object then forms a very large image and it'll be upside down because the first image is upside down that means the object of the second lens will be upside down as well which will form an upside down virtual image. So when we look through a telescope we actually see everything upside down. And if you want to see what it looks like right side up, you just simply have to turn the picture and turn 180 degrees around. But notice how it uses the principle of the two lenses. For faraway objects, the image will form very close to the focal point, just past the focal point. For the second lens, since the object is inside the focal point, as we call it, closer to the lens on the focal point of the second lens, a virtual image will be formed, making the final image that the astronomer or the observer will see. And it's very much enlarged, as you can see. Now, what would be the magnification, as we call it? How much bigger is the final image compared to the original object? Well, it turns out that the magnification, and for magnification, is simply the ratio of the focal length of the objective, so we call the focal length of the objective, divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So typically, the focal length of the objective can be 50 centimeters, 100 centimeters, you know, 3 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet, however long your telescope is. It's basically almost the length of your telescope. If you have a really long telescope that's 100 feet or 200 feet long, then of course the focal length of the objective is a very large focal length. And the focal length of the eyepiece is usually very small. So, for example, let's say for a typical uh, telescope that you can buy at the local store, you may say that the focal length of the objective is 100 centimeters and the focal length of the eyepiece, let's say, is 2 centimeters and then simply the magnification is then a ratio of 50 to 1. In other words, all objects that you see through that telescope would then appear 50 times larger as you would see them with the naked eye when you're not using a telescope. That's not necessarily the most important factor. Most people think, oh, you want a telescope with a very large magnification. The problem is if you make it very large, but the telescope is relatively small, you can get enough light into the telescope to make the image visible. The image may be so faint you can't even see it, even though the objects may be, uh, the image that you're looking at may be very large, it may not do you much good if it's so faint that you can't see it. So magnification, yes, it's one factor of the telescope, but clarity and resolution 
and visibility is even more important. So in the next several videos, I will show you what's really important about a telescope and what the most important factors is when you're looking to buy a telescope. So I'll show you that. But the simple fact is, two converging lenses, a big one called the objective, a small one called the eyepiece, place them apart in such a way that the focal points just overlap, just barely. The image of the first lens will become the object of the second lens. That object, since it appears within the focal point of the second lens, will become a very large image that's virtual. And so make sure we realize that it's a virtual image. And it's upside down. And that's what we see when we look through the telescope. And the magnification is simply the ratio of the focal lengths of the large objective lens and the small eyepiece. And usually those are pretty big numbers. That's how we see that.